So that is getting daf peyvav begins with a mishnah and ends with a mishnah. The first mishnah is a famous mishnah in this masechta that introduces the machlekes between Rabbi Meir and Rabbi Eliezer. We've seen it quoted throughout the masechta as to what is the essence of the divorce. Is it the witnesses who are signed on the get that make it a valid get, and then you just have to give it, or is it the seeing the witnesses who see the get handed from husband to wife that makes the divorce? And the only reason for the signatures there are so that we can track those witnesses down if we need to establish that they're not forged. This mishnah introduces that topic. It may potentially bring a third opinion, which is not Rabbi Meir, as our Tanakamba, which the Gemara will discuss who that is. So then the essence of this Mishnah is discussing three Gitin that are missing something, which are Pasol Midir uh, And the Gemara will discuss other ones, why they are not on the list here. So the Mishnah begins says that there are three types of Gitin that are Pasol. And if she remarried based on this get, the child that's born from the second marriage is not a mamzer, which means that Midarai said it gets kosher, it's just a psalmidra banan. The three are if there are no witnesses signed on the get, but it is written in the handwriting of the husband, we machlagis in the Gemara, if that counts as signatures, and this is Rabbi Meir, or if it's no signatures, and this is a third opinion that holds handwriting is good enough to establish that the husband had intent here. Second case is if it has, if it's missing the date on the get. We've seen Machogas earlier in the Masechta. Why we need the date? Is it to prevent a situation where the husband will try to cover up for his wife's misdeeds, or that potentially he can uh, take fruits from her property that he wasn't supposed to? And the third one is if you have one signature on the get, and we have in the Gemara, if that's with handwriting of the husband or without handwriting of the husband. The mission continues and repeats, these are the three gitten that are possible, but if you use them, the child is not a mamzer. Then the, then the mission means the third, the other opinion, which is Rabbi Lezer says you don't have to have witnesses on the get at all. It's kosher. If you don't have it, the only reason it's there is as a tikkun oilam, in order to prove that the signatures were actually there, but if uh, that there are witnesses actually there, I'm able to track them down. But if you don't have signatures, you can still collect from property that's been sold in order to pay off the ksuba. It's just the tikkun Okay, now the Gemara begins. The Gemara wants to know why did we leave out certain things, certain other cases which are possibly Rabbanon from the list in this Mishnah. Now, as part of the Gemara's answer, we're going to have to keep in mind two machloks. And first of all, machloks between Rav and Levi in our Mishnah, what happens with her second husband if she gets divorced based on this get, does she have to leave him? We said the child's not a mamzer, but does she have to leave her second husband? That's going to be a machlekes Rav and Levi. And also we had a machlekes between Rabbi Meir and the other Chachamim, whether someone changes the tiniest thing in the get, if that makes the child a mamzer or not. So on the list here, Bigmar asks, why did we leave out a get yashan? That is a get that was written and then there was a yichud, the husband together with the wife, so that's a that's a psalm meter bono. Why is that not on the list? So the Gemara says, according to the opinion that says that in our Mishnah he has to leave her, um, that's the difference. Um, because that is the second husband has to leave her, that's the difference. Because over there, the second husband doesn't have to leave her here, he does. Going to the second opinion then you'd have to say, because over there, he's even allowed, she's even allowed to go get married, you're not supposed to use this get, but once the get was given, you could rely on it and go get married. Here, you definitely cannot go get married. It's only if she did that she can stay. Second question, the Gemara asks is, what about a get kireach, a get that's folded and tied, as we've seen, a get bakusher, and there's missing a signature of one of the witnesses in one of the folds. So the Gemara says, the reason is because that makes the child a mamzer. Um, if that get is used, so Gemara says that's only Rabbi Meir's opinion that any slight change is a uh, creates mamzer. What are you going to do according to the Rabbanon to say that does not make mamzer? Gemara says the difference will, again will be because here uh, she does not have to leave her second husband. There she does. Again, the Gemara says that's only according to one opinion. So the Gemara says according to the other opinion, you'll have to say that this mission is just not discussing a tied and folded get. It's not talking about a get makusher. It's only talking about a regular get. Third, the Gemara asks, what about a get that has the date counting according to a government which is not the one in power where it's written? We've seen earlier in the fine test that we don't want to do that because it creates friction with the government. So the Gemara says again, according to the opinion that he or she can stay with her second husband, the difference is there that she can't. According to the other opinion, it's because the child's a mamzer. Again, the Gemara says that's only good according to every mayor. 
And then the uh, Gemara's third opinion, and the Gemara says, what are you going to do? What are you going to do according to the Rabbi Bunnan? The Gemara says, this will have to be Rabbi Meir. It won't be able to be anyone else. Um, now the Gemara wants to know, why is there a number written in the beginning and in the end? Why does it say three types of Gittin have this pill, and then at the end it repeats and there's a three have this pill? What is being excluded each time we list the number three? It always excludes some other cases that aren't being mentioned here on purpose. So the is the first time it says the number is to exclude all these other ones that we put on the list. The reason that it repeats it at the end is to exclude the case of somebody who brings again and doesn't say funny nachta, funny nachta, a brisa. So someone brings a get from Medina Sayyam, has to say funny nachta, funny nachta. If they don't, just to get divorced and the child is a mamzer from the second husband. That is Rabbi Meir's opinion. The Chacham say she's the child is not a mamzer. You can just take the get back, give it again, and say befani nechdav befani nechdam, and make sure that there are two witnesses there as should be. The Gemara now gets into the third case in the Mishnah where we said you have one witness. How does that work? So Gemara brings the Machlokes Rabbi Shmuel. Where it says the Rav and Rav Yechanan both said on this mission of the comment that we're are talking about where, where you have the handwriting of the husband. The Mar says can't be talking about the first case because we already said that explicitly. Can't be talking about the second case because over there you have witnesses. So we're talking about the third case where you have one witness. You also, according to Rav and Rav Yechanan, you have to have the handwriting of the husband. And the Chiddush is that even though the handwriting of the husband is kosher, b'dyeved, like we said in the first case of this. Mishnah, if you have one witness, it's Kasha Lechatchila. They can Lechatchila go ahead and use it to get remarried. Now, Shmuel disagrees. Shmuel says we are talking about where you don't have any handwriting. The husband, you have the handwriting of the cipher, and one witness plus the cipher is good, and that's because Shmuel holds that the cipher himself counts as a witness because he would not have written it had he not heard from the husband that he wants to use it yet. He wants to divorce his wife, so therefore his handwriting is also testimony to that. Now, the Gemara notes there's a price that says explicitly if you have the handwriting of a cipher plus one aid, that that's kosher. So the Gemara says Rav will not have a problem with that. Rav will say that that's talking about Bidievid. Here we're talking about Lechatchila. Shmuel will explain the difference between Bidievid and Lechatchila is depending what kind of cipher you have there. If it's an expert cipher that we could assume that he made sure that the husband really wants to divorce, then you can rely on that Lechatchila as a testimony. If it's not an expert cipher, then it's only that you could use that bidyevid. Lorna discusses whether or not she has to leave her husband based on the get that was given at Mishnah. We saw that her child from her second marriage is not a mamzer, but can she stay with the second husband? The Marcos Machokas Rav against Levi and Yechanan. Rav says it depends if by the time we found out about this marriage, she already had children. If she had children, in order to make sure that they are not considered to be mamzerim, she does not have to leave her second husband. Levi and Rebekhan say she never has to leave her second husband, even if she doesn't have children. She can stay with him. So Gemara asks if she's not leaving her second husband, it's a problem based on a Mishnah in Yivam. The Mishnah there talks about uh, Tsaris Erva, that's if you have two women that are falling to Yivam, two co wives falling to Yivam, one of them is an Erva to the Yivam, and therefore she apostles and she potters Yivam for herself and for her co wife. If there's a problem with that ever lady, though, that is if she had a Suffolk Kedushin to the original husband who died, or she had a Suffolk divorce from that husband, then what do you do with the Tzara? She's a Suffolk Tzara's erva. So Allah over there is she requires Chalitza and not Yibun. And on the list of what's a Suffolk Kedushin and what's a Suffolk Gerishin, we have a Suffolk Kedushin as if Kedushin was thrown to her, we're not sure if it landed closer to her or to him. Suffolk Gerishin is our three cases in our Mishnah. So you see our three cases in our Mishnah, we insist that the tsara, if she's a tsara, if she's a tzara, tzara erva, do chalitza. Now, if we're going to allow her to stay married to her husband in these cases, she's going to end up doing uh, no yibum or chalitza. She's going to assume, hey, they stayed married. It must have been kosher marriage. So why do I have to do chalitza? So the Gemara says, you're right, that'll happen. And we're not worried about it because Midaraisa, she is divorced. And therefore, the other tsara is a uh, real yavam, she'll do yibam, or if she's fully gone, she'll do chal- sh- she won't do anything. Um, and we're not we're not afraid if she's going to do yibam that she's going to be a real tsaras erva who's doing yibam because she's not a real tsaras erva. She's really the only uh, yavama because the tsara because the erva is really divorced midday raisa. 
Now, the Gemara says this halacha was said by Rav Yechanan to the children of Rav Chalafta, of Huna. He also said another halacha to them in the name of their fathers. He said, your father also said that if a uh, creature called a kartsis of the Amir, kartsis Sheb Amir, if that drinks from paraduma water, it doesn't possible it. Normally, an animal drinking from paraduma water possibles it because paraduma water has to be free of any work. An animal that drinks from it puts the water in its mouth and lifts its head up and swallows, and some of it drips down into the water. So that water has been worked water. It's been used by the animal. The kartsis sucks from the water. It doesn't pull any out and swallow it, so it never drips any back into the water. Now, what is this kartsis? So Abaya says it's a very large fly size of the grasshopper, which grows between the stalks, lives between the stalks. Mimar says that um, Daniel Barav Katina asked the Kasha, it says all types of birds, I mean, all types of flying creatures do puzzle Pardum water if they drink from it, except for the Yaina, except for the dove. So why is this not listed as well? So the reason why it's not listed is because some do puzzle and some don't puzzle. The large ones don't puzzle, the small one will puzzle. What size? The Yermia says until the size of a Kizayas. From a Kazayas and larger apostles, smaller than a Kazayas does not possible. That's why it's not listed because there's no uh, cross the board halacha. The Gemara now gets into what is halacha la maisa on the Samachakis between Rabbi Meir and the Rabbanan. The Gemara brings a list of Amiraim and how they pass in here. The Gemara says, Rabbi Huda says in the name of Rav, the halacha Zarek Rabbi Elazar only concerning Gitin, not concerning other Shtarais. Other Shtarais, you do have to have signatures on it. Shmuel disagrees. Shmuel says Allah is like Rabbi Lazar in Gitin and in Shtaris. Shmuel asks that Rabbi Lazar clearly said his Allah in Shtaris as well, because he says you can collect from Nechasm Shubadim, you can collect from sold properties. That's something that applies to Shtaris. It's a Shtar Halacha. Shmuel says, yes, Rabbi Lazar said his Allah in Shtaris. Rav doesn't mean to say Rabbi Lazar didn't say it. It means to say that he doesn't pass in that way as far as other Shtaris. Rashi gives the source for it. Now the Gemara says, Rav Yaakov Bar Idi said, "Rav Yishuv and Levi, the Alachas are Gbalaz are in Gitin." Rav Yana said, "It doesn't even have the Reach again. It doesn't even pass for Kahuna." The Gemara says, it "Doesn't pass for Kahuna." You mean to say it doesn't hold like Rav Yilazar? He's saying Rav Yilazar's get doesn't pass for Kahuna. The Gemara says, "No, he's saying that the Rabbanon hold that a get without signatures doesn't pass for Kahuna." But Rav Yilazar, uh, he's not saying that he. Doesn't hold that way. Rabbi Yisbar Chanina says the same thing. Name of Rish Lakish. Allah was like Rabbi Lazar and Gitin. Rabbi Yechon has said it doesn't even have Reicha Get. Then the Gemara says he doesn't hold it. Rabbi Lazar says no. He means to say that Rabban on hold it doesn't have Reicha Get. Abba Bar Zavda sent to Mari Bar Mar to ask Rav Huna what's the halacha. At the time he asked him, Rav Huna had died, but his son Rabba was there, and he said, "I'll tell you what my father said." In the name of Rava, the halacha is like Rabbi Lazar and Gitin, but those. Rabbeim, who are experts in the halacha, say in the name of Rav that the halacha is like Rav Lazar in Gitin only. And they are Chama Bar Yura in the name of Rav, says the halacha is like Rav Lazar in Gitin. Some say that he didn't say they're Rabbeim, but he said our um, colleagues that are experts said that the halacha is that way, and that's Rav Chizda. Um, and the Talmidim of Rav said the name of Rav that the Lachas like Rabbi Lazar in Gitin. And that's what Rabbi Chizda said the name of Rav Chambar Gira the Lachas like Rabbi Lazar in Gitin. When Ravin came, he said Rabbi Lazar, that is the Amir Rabbi Lazar said the Lachas like Rabbi Lazar the Tana in Gitin only. We now begin our next Mishnah, which discusses what happens if you have two confused Gitin or multiple divorces on one get document. First Mishra says if you have two people who sent a get with the same shliach, two husbands sent a get with the same shliach to divorce their wives, they all had the same names. And the two getin, of course, were mixed up. It's not clear whose is whose. So the Mishra Paskins is no problem. Each one is given to each woman. You give each get to both of them, and therefore she's for sure divorced. Each one is for sure divorced because she for sure receives her right get. Get. However, if one of them is lost, now you don't know which one was lost, and therefore you don't know which one is going to work, which one is not going to work. Neither of them can use either of the two gitin. Next case, Misha discusses if you have five people who all decide to combine their divorces into one document, that you write that five men divorcing five women, you put it all together in one star, one get, and it's signed. 
So in that situation, it depends how they're written out. If it's combined, the Mishnah says, then it's good. If it's written separately, then it's no good. And the Gemara of the Machlok is to define what is called combined and what is called separate. So now let's see the Gemara. So we're only going to see part of the Gemara here. The Gemara first wants to know who is the Tana that authorizes giving the get without knowing which of the two Gitin is the one that works. The Gemara first wants to say it doesn't fit with Rav Lazar. Rav Lazar holds Adi Mesir Karti. The witnesses have to establish the divorce by seeing it. So the question is, that means when the Torah says Lishma, it's going on the giving of the get. It's not going on the writing of the get because... The writing is not important according to Rabbi Elazar. So here, the witness is not seeing the Shema. So uh, the witness doesn't know which get is the right one. So how could it be good? So the Mara first wants to say that this Mishnah can't fit with Rabbi Elazar. It has to be Rabbi Meir. And Abayah says, no, it could fit with Rabbi Elazar. Rabbi Elazar only requires that it be written Lishma. He does not require that the giving of the get has to be Lishma.